I wake to the smell of burnt bacon and pork sausage frying in a nonstick pan that no longer nonsticks. The house is filled with music from bands that all broke up decades ago. The Beatles, The Temptations, Creedence Clearwater Revival. These songs will one day invoke a bitter nostalgia in me. I will try to enjoy them, but I will be unable to fully move on from what they represent. I get dressed and debate whether to even bother brushing my teeth or bathing before hopelessly walking down the stairs and peeling back a greasy paper towel and attempting to eat at least a few pieces of bacon. I am hoping that no one says a word to me this morning so I can just walk out to the bus in peace. I am still disappointed when they don't. As I walk towards the bus, I note the way that the rain has made the broken, deteriorating roads look even drearier. I wonder why the roads always look terrible. The sleep deprivation hits me as I sit down on the bus. That night, I'd been desperately trying to cry myself into a state of exhaustion so, so that I can get some sleep and, and failing for hours. I look around at the kids around me and feel a great sense of loneliness, knowing that no one will ask why I'm so tired today. I will wonder if anyone even cares. I arrive at school, and I begin to lose the ability to pay attention to anything, as being forced to sit in a chair and listen to a lecture on a subject I don't care about finally lulls me into the sleep I was so desperately clawing at just hours ago. Sometimes my teachers will make futile attempts at trying to get me to wake up. Or they'll give me detention or send me to in-school suspension for my delinquent behavior. But for the most part, they do nothing. My whole day becomes lost in this cycle of sleeping in my desk and attempting to catch whatever the lesson of the day was in between moments of passing out. Occasionally, I will catch fleeting bursts of energy, and in these moments, I will display high levels of fluid intelligence. I will extrapolate entire lessons from piecemeal information on the board, reverse engineering whatever I heard most recently to answer questions on worksheets that were explained while I was unconscious or just not paying attention. It will not always be sleep that takes me. Sheer boredom, guilty sadness, Creeping anxiety and sometimes even an enthusiastic imagination will tear me into another dimension entirely. I will be punished for this, and when asked why I do it, I will freeze in terror. Unable to speak, I will be punished for that as well. At times, I will be in a class that I care about, There's something I'm interested in. Then the color will return to the world. I will suddenly be able to notice something other than my internal universe. I will be curious about the material from which my desk is made, the size of the room I am in, the spatial aura of the people around me, and what messages their clothes and body language are sending off about who they are. I will use this time to prove I am more than how I have felt all my life. I am not worthless. I am just as passionate and competent as anyone else. I will prove this by easily overcoming any challenge presented to me in these classes. I will ask for extra work to do in class and at home just to drive home how ambitious I am. These will be the only moments I feel that I belong in society. I never got to take choir, but the choir teacher was very nice to me. When the day became far too overwhelming and I couldn't stand the idea of going to my next class, I would go into the back closet of the choir room, hide myself behind some large furniture or prop, and cry silently so as not to disturb her class. I will do this very often and somehow never get in trouble for skipping classes. 
At the end of the day, I will wait impatiently on the sidewalk for the bus to arrive so that I can return home from another day of repetitive, torturous hell. I will note the cracked, deteriorating pavement has evaporated all of the water from this morning's rain and no longer has that dreary look and somber smell. Yet, it still looks terrible. It has been neglected into a state of disrepair and desperately needs someone to come along and repave it. How can a city possibly have the audacity to tell its citizens that it cares about them when it won't repave a damn school road for 20 years? As I'm going home, I will stare blankly out the window, looking ahead as if I had died in that spot. I will barely blink or look at anything with intention or purpose. I will simply plant my head against the cold metal and glass of the bus window and stare forward, like it is illegal for me to move my eyes. When I am finally home, I hope to God no one will say a word to me and just allow me to go upstairs and have nothing to do with them today. I am still disappointed when I'm right. I thank God that my behavior today didn't cause me to receive a detention slip, as that could result in another beating. Leather belts whipping across your ass are humiliating. Belt buckles whipping across your face are worse. I retreat to my room and hope that everyone continues to leave me alone. I am still disappointed when I'm right. I don't have any plans for today. I don't... I never have any plans. I just do whatever I can in the evening and try to take my mind off of everything I've just experienced. I sit down on the musty yellow and aquamarine floral print couch that I uncomfortably sleep on every night and watch TV. Although it's not really watching, it's it's reminiscent of the way I would stare out on the bus. I'm just kind of... I'm just kind of looking at it. Trying to take my mind off of... Of everything... That's ever happened to me. It's all painful. Too painful to think about it. Too painful to talk about. Too painful to admit. Too painful. It's just too painful. At night, when there's nothing good left to watch, I turn off the TV and lay down on my bedroom couch. It's starting again. I feel the tears come. I can't resist all the things I feel anymore. I sob quietly to myself so that no one can hear me. I'm afraid of what anyone will do if they hear me. Through my inconsolable crying, I silently pray to God in my head. I ask him why he thought it would be so funny to make my life such a joke. And I pray that he will simply take my life in my sleep so that I will not have to face further pain and so that I will not have to live the rest of my life. No one ever asks about these things that I do. No one seems to notice or care when I talk about it. I always seem to get punished when I try to get help. I replay all these rejections and disappointments over and over in my head as I weep alone, desperately trying to drift off into unconsciousness to free myself from this emotional turmoil that I can't distract myself from anymore. I, I try not to think about the future. The future seems like hell. All the roads look terrible. 